Hello, kindergartners. Welcome to Jesus Time for this week. Again, I wish you were here on the carpet with me, but again, what a blessing to be at home, a blessing to be with those that love you and are there to take care of you and to keep you safe during this time. Thankfully, uh, nothing can keep us away from God's Word, and God's Word is really what we need today and every day, and so it's wonderful to spend this time with you this morning talking about God's Word and being blessed by God's Word in our time together today. So, boys and girls, we're going to start by reminding ourselves of our memory verse that we're working on uh, this week and, and also um, next week, um, because we definitely want to get it in our, in our remembering. And again, our memory verse that we've been working on comes to us from Psalm 23. It's the last verse, verse 6 of Psalm 23. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Again, let's break that apart a little bit so we can really get it in our remembering. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Say that with me three times. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And here's the last part of it. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Say that with me. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Again, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One more time. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So let's put it all together, boys and girls. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's say it together. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, boys and girls, like we talked about last week, when we talk about God's goodness and mercy following us all the days of our life, that means each and every day God blesses us with gifts we don't deserve. He blesses us with those who love us and take care of us. And, of course, the greatest blessings come to us through Jesus, our good shepherd. You are his little lamb, and he loved you so much that he did what for you? That's right, he died for you on the cross. We'll be talking about that here in a little bit. And, of course, he didn't stay dead, did he? He came back to life on Easter. And because he came back to life on Easter, that means he's your forever shepherd, always there to lead you and to guide you, to feed you and to take care of you, to take away your sins, and, of course, to give you his goodness and mercy each and every day of your life. And then one day to take you to the house of the Lord forever. So surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, boys and girls, when we think about being in the Father's house, and of course, in this Bible verse, when we talk about being in the house of the Lord, that's another word for heaven. That one day, our good shepherd Jesus is going to take us to be with him forever in that wonderful place where there is no sin or sadness, where nobody gets sick with COVID-19 or the coronavirus or anything else. What a wonderful place that will be. What a wonderful time it will be. Well, boys and girls, I'd like to share with you a Bible story today that will help us think about the house of the Lord and being in the house of the Lord forever. Next week, boys and girls, is a very special and a very important week. We call it Holy Week. Say that with me. Holy Week. Now, Holy Week starts this Sunday already with the Sunday called Palm Sunday. Can you say that with me? Palm Sunday. Now, if you remember what happened on Palm Sunday, Jesus was coming into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, and the people of Jerusalem took palm branches. That's why we call it Palm Sunday. They were waving them. They were praising God. They were saying this special word that means that is Hosanna, which means save us now. So they were offering their Hosannas of praise as they welcomed Jesus as a king into Jerusalem. But things changed throughout the week. Instead of lots of people praising Jesus, people started yelling, crucify him. They wanted him to be put to death on the cross. On the Thursday after Palm Sunday, 
we call that day Monday Thursday. Can you say that word with me? Monday Thursday. On that day, Jesus gave a special meal, a special meal that we still celebrate in the church called communion or the Lord's Supper. After they celebrated communion, then Jesus went with his disciples out to a special garden, a place called the Garden of Gethsemane. And there Jesus prayed. He asked his disciples to pray with him, but as Jesus prayed, the disciples fell asleep. Well, in the middle of the night, some soldiers came and they arrested Jesus and they put him on trial. In fact, he had many trials through the night, some before Pilate, some before Ananias and Caiaphas and Herod. And eventually Jesus was put to death. As we say in the creed, he suffered under Pontius Pilate because it ultimately was Pontius Pilate that said he must die. And so then they made Jesus carry his cross. This was after they, they whipped him many times, treated him terribly, put that crown of thorns on his head. And then he was so weak, he couldn't even carry his cross the whole way. And so they, made, they forced a man by the name of Simon to carry it for him. Well then, boys and girls, they put Jesus on the cross. And when Jesus died, he wasn't the only one that they were putting to death that day by dying on the cross. There were two others who were crucified with Jesus. So here is Jesus in the middle, and here is a person that's being crucified next to Jesus, and here's another person that's also being nailed to the cross. Now, of course, when Jesus was put on the cross, how many sins did Jesus commit? That's right. He never committed a single sin. He was perfect. But, of course, the reason he's dying is to pay the price for our sins. He suffers and dies for us and for our sins. Now, the people that were dying next to Jesus, they had done some terrible things. They had rebelled. They had murdered. They had stolen. And so they were being punished for the terrible things that they had done. Now, at the beginning of the day, when Jesus was on the cross, the people around the cross were making fun of Jesus. They were mocking him. They were saying, if you're the Son of God, come down and save yourself. And both of the people next to Jesus, they were also making fun of Jesus, mocking him. Of course, that's not good. That's not something that God wants to do. But as the day went on, this one person, even though he had done terrible things, even though earlier in the day he had been making fun of Jesus and mocking him, when he began to see what Jesus was doing, when he heard what Jesus was saying, when he saw some of the other things that were going on, like this darkness that nobody could explain, he realized that Jesus wasn't a bad man, being, bad man being punished for what he'd done, that Jesus was the Son of God, that he was the Savior. By the Holy Spirit, he was brought to believe in Jesus. And so as he was just very, very close to dying himself, he prays to Jesus because that's what believers do. Just like you pray, just like you say the Lord's Prayer. So now this man, because he was a believer, was also praying to Jesus. And this was his prayer. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus gave the answer to his prayer right then. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, boys and girls, what do you think paradise is referring to? When Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. That's right, boys and girls. Paradise is heaven. You see, Jesus died, and when he died, his soul, his spirit went to be with the Father in heaven. And because this man, even though he had done terrible things, because he was forgiven and saved by Jesus, when he died, his soul went to paradise too. He was in the house of the Lord forever. And all because Jesus shed his blood and died on the cross for him, just like Jesus shed his blood and died on the cross for you. Because Jesus died for you and rose again for you, like the thief on the cross, you know that when you die, you're going to be in the house of the Lord forever. That when you die on that very day, you're going to be with Jesus in paradise. And we know that that's where we're going to be when we die, because Jesus didn't stay dead. He came back to life. And since Jesus is greater than death, stronger than death, more powerful than death, we know that he's going to give us that life, that when we die, we're going to live forever with him. 
We are going to be with him in paradise. We are going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So again, that's what our Bible verse reminds us of. That's what the events there on Good Friday with the man who was being crucified next to Jesus, that reminds us of that as well. That indeed we are going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So again, boys and girls, let's think about our Bible verse. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Say it with me together one more time. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Boys and girls, that's wonderful news, that Jesus is our good shepherd, who leads and guides us, who laid down his life for us, his sheep, who feeds and nourishes us, and one day will lead us to heaven, lead us to paradise, when we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, boys and girls, as we think about next week and Holy Week, I'll look forward to talking to you again then. Boys and girls, if there's any questions you have, if there's any way that I can serve you or your family, a lot of times in Jesus' time you would have questions and Mrs. Beanlander would write them down and we would spend some time at the end of Jesus' time answering your questions. So boys and girls, if you have any questions about Jesus or the Bible or the church, tell your mom and dad. Ask them to write them down. You can email them to Mrs. Beanlander or you can email them to me and I'll make sure that I answer your questions next time that we have Jesus time because I want you to learn as much as you can learn about Jesus and the Bible. And again, if there's anything that I can do, please let me know. You can even give me a call. I'd love to talk to you, boys and girls. Boys and girls, we're going to conclude our Jesus time today by praying that special prayer that Jesus gave us called the Lord's Prayer. So let's go ahead and let's fold our hands, close our eyes and bow our heads, and let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Boys and girls, know that I'm praying for you and for your family. And again, God's blessings to you and look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.